Pedigree is track genetic traits through a family tree. Squares represent males, circles females, and these shapes are shaded when individuals express the trait in question. Each Mendelian trait is located in two positions on the chromosome called alleles, which can either be dominant or recessive. Dominant traits are expressed if one or two of the alleles are dominant, while recessive traits are only expressed if both alleles are recessive. Most traits are either autosomal, meaning that they are located on chromosome pairs 1 to 22, or X-linked, meaning that they are located on the X chromosome. Since the X chromosome is much larger than the Y chromosome, most traits located on the X chromosomes do not have a corresponding allele on the Y chromosome. The resulting traits are therefore expressed in the following manner. As a result of autosomal and X-linked traits, the four most common types of pedigrees include autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive. Some basic rules of Mendelian pedigrees include that in all cases of recessive traits, if both parents exhibit the recessive trait, all children will also exhibit this recessive trait. The reason for this is shown in the Punit squares displayed on the screen. In the case of X-linked dominant traits, affected fathers always have affected daughters. Again, the reason why is shown in the Punit squares on the screen. Finally, in the case of X-linked recessive traits, affected mothers always have affected sons. Let's use everything we have learned to analyze two examples. Example 1. Here you can see that we are trying to determine which pedigree type we are dealing with. We can use one of the rules to eliminate two pedigree types right out of the gate. Namely, if this was a recessive trait, all of the children of these two parents would have to exhibit the trait as well. Here we can use another rule to eliminate another option. Rule 2 states that if the trait is X-linked dominant, an affected father will always have affected daughters. But this is not the case here. That leaves us with an autosomal dominant pedigree. Now let's move to example 2. This example is trickier. However, after some consideration, one may realize that we can use an inverse of rule 1 over here. Because if the track trait was dominant, these parents would have to be recessive, and therefore all of their children would also express the trait as well, which is not the case. Therefore the trait cannot be dominant, i.e. it must be recessive. Now the real fun begins. From now on we have to figure things out one unit square at a time. Let's start at the top and let's first assume that the trait is autosomal recessive. Therefore the mother must be recessive. But what about the father? Well if he was homozygous dominant, meaning that both his alleles would be dominant, what would happen to the children? They would all be dominant as well, which is not the case. Therefore he must be heterozygous, meaning that one allele is dominant and the other is recessive. Their children, which are not recessive, will therefore also be heterozygous. Now let's consider the subfamily on the left. Here we encounter a similar situation where we initially don't know if the father is homozygous, dominant or heterozygous. Well, just as with the father in the first generation, if the father were to be homozygous dominant, none of the resulting children would express the trait. Therefore, this father must be heterozygous, and all the children that do not express the recessive trait will either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Now, for the subfamily on the right, in this case we also know that the mother must be heterozygous, since one of the children are recessive. This means that the two daughters that do not express the trait are heterozygous too. We have now effectively proven that this pedigree can be autosomal recessive. However, if we were to assume that this was an X-linked recessive pedigree, everything will work out in a very similar manner as the autosomal recessive pedigree. What this means is that in this particular case, the trait in question can be both autosomal recessive and X-linked recessive. If you want to learn more about anything else on the topic of Mendelian genetics, check out this playlist.